Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. I am here to introduce Carnegie Mellon University. Um, Microsoft has had a really long and fruitful relationship with Carnegie Mellon. Carnegie Mellon is located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, at the intersection of three rivers. And um, it's quite the phenomenal school. And it's really, really well known for computer science, but many people don't know how well known it is for its design school. And I, um, Carnegie Mellon School of Design has actually participated in six design expos. I've had the privilege of participating in five of those. And this is my first year on the other side of the fence um, from, from Microsoft. And it's been a really wonderful experience for me to see this from all of those different perspectives and having the opportunity to work with phenomenal people like Curtis and, and Mike. Um, this year, uh, because I wasn't at Carnegie Mellon, the, uh, the class was taught by four people, uh, really fabulous instructors, Chris Kasabak, Vanessa Sika, Bruce Hannington, who was always my co-collaborator, and Chris Pacione. One of the things that I'm sure it's really hard for you to imagine is um, we had actually uh, several different teams and choosing among those teams which one would be the one to come and, and present to you is really, really challenging. Uh, we use some, some pretty specific criteria to select the teams, um, but these are uh, what you see up here are some of the teams from the past years. Go play, they threw frisbees out in the audience. Uh, currency and synchronicity was last year's. Um, news was one of the teams, and this particular team leveraged social connection to deliver personally relevant news sources from around the world uh, to around the corner. What was really fun about these guys was that they were thinking about truly personalized information that when you went up and you purchased your Starbucks, at the, uh, at the coffee shop, actually news that was relevant to you in that location would be printed on the cup and then, of course, dissipate over time. Metastar was another really phenomenal um, project, and this was a very, very special team. Um, they were really interested in how challenging it is for uh, people who immigrate to the United States to become a part of the culture of the United States. How do they establish that community? How do they become confident in the community? And so Metastar was an online um, social network that enabled them to sort of learn about each other and what it was like to be a foreigner in the United States. Fleet, this one um, was a time-saving tool, an interactive network that provided mothers an easier way to save money and make healthy choices. What was interesting about this one was that what they really wanted to do uh, start out was let's get people to be really, really healthy. Um, and what they found out was actually women didn't care that much. They were the responsible ones. They really wanted to be able to do it. They wanted health, but they really wanted to be able to do it in a way that was um, economical and something that they could manage from a time perspective. This was a great sort of both web and um, uh, mobile-based service. Raising Hands was a comprehensive interactive membership that collaborates with school districts to introduce something quite special, uh, project-based learning. So how can you get project-based learning out into the community? Um, active learning projects. And finally, uh, Cumulus. Cumulus was designed for researchers to fil filter relevant information and provide proactive ways to connect with peers and facilitate relevant collaboration. So you're out there doing research, 
you sort of know the, the usual suspects of the people that you should collaborate with when you're doing research, but you might not know the sort of edge cases, the people who might be really uh, the game changers for you. And so Cumulus was designed to help you do that. Um, now I'd like to introduce the team that was selected. And again, this was a really impossible decision, but this is the great set of students who will uh, show you their project. When I was 16, uh, I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, but I had a great writing teacher who took me under his wing. And I'm here now because of that inspiration. You know, had my school been faced with the funding cuts that schools are faced with today, I doubt I'd be standing here right now. Teens today know a lot about these traditional art forms, uh, such as music, writing, painting, film. But what they're not aware of is that these traditional forms are now a launching point for a multitude of creative careers, such as makeup art, set design, and interaction design. And they're certainly not going to learn about it in school. Los Angeles United School District actually recently moved to cut 50% of their arts teachers in the coming school year, and the remaining 50% in 2012. So where does that leave teens? Not to mention the future for these creative industries. My name is Eric Spaulding. With me is Stephanie Meyer, Alia Baptista, Sarah Calandro, and Cheryl Templeton. We are master's students from the School of Design at Carnegie Mellon University. We'd like to thank Shelley Evanson and our course faculty for giving us the tremendous opportunity to create and debut Guru. Guru is an online social networking service that helps teens develop their creative interests and explore creative arts and education services with the help of professionals, arts institutions, and universities. So to trace back a little, we began our research by trying to understand the obvious and tacit experiences of teens and the offline social networks that impact their lives. Teens, we found, spend a lot of time on online social networking sites like Facebook. When asked about the arts, their opinions were largely restricted to uh, those that they were exposed to in schools. Parents, we found, didn't have useful knowledge specific to creative industries, and hence they weren't in a position to really help their kids. Teachers spoke to us about budgets and bureaucracies that tended to form in school hurdles. And finally, creative professionals told us about their lack of exposure during their teen years. But it was really during our generative phase where we uncovered a huge problem. Teens are aware of the creative fields out there, through schools obviously, however, they aren't really aware about the multitude of creative professions. So if they don't know about the existence of these professions, how are they expected to know what to look for? This meant a couple of things for the product that we were going to design. Whatever we designed would need to have personalized content. It would need to be low effort in order to engage professionals in participation. It would need to leverage popular social networking sites, excuse me, social networking sites that are popular amongst teens. And finally, it would need to have parental buy-in. So what is Guru? Guru is a browser sidebar that unobtrusively tracks a teen's browsing patterns while simultaneously making recommendations. So a teenager will get notified about a lot of creative fields while browsing. It is also a website that uniquely links teens with creative professions in a social network that allows for, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, allows for an exchange of resources. It was really in our prototyping sessions that we realized we needed to shift away from a task-oriented model, which we had implied, which we had applied earlier, to a more social exploratory model that would give a sense of discovery. So currently then, we knew that teens had these offline social networks comprised of parents, teachers, peers, etc. But we found that they tended to be very shallow sources of information. What teens really need and can benefit from but don't currently have access to are new social networks comprised of universities, cultural institutions, professionals, and creative companies. 
and Guru connects them to these networks. Guru breaks down that initial barrier that hindered a teen's cultural exposure. So with Guru, a teenager can broaden their interests by interacting with creative professionals. Professionals will benefit because they can promote their work. Creative companies will benefit because they can promote their brand and their products. Cultural institutions and universities will now receive more qualified students. And finally, parents will understand their teens' creative interests better and now really play a more defined role in molding their future. So it really is a perfect fit for teens. In fact, in 2009, a Nielsen study showed that more than half of teens tend to look to their online social networks for advice and for support. With Guru, they have trusted sources for this. So with that said, we'd like to introduce you all to Christina. She is a 17-year-old high school student whose life has been impacted by Guru. A few months ago, I had no clue what I wanted to study in college. I dreaded questions from my parents about the future. I knew I loved watching movies, but wasn't interested in acting or directing. Then Max told me about Guru. Guru helped me discover my interest in motion graphics, which I'd never heard of before. I was online watching my favorite scene from Avatar when Guru's browser sidebar notified me about all these people and professions in film. That's when I discovered a really cool guru, Chase Iverson. He's a motion graphic artist for MTV and frequently posts cool stuff for the guru community to check out, like stories about a day in the life of a motion graphic artist, past stuff he's worked on, and resources to learn more. Guru lets me save Chase's tagged content to my collections so I can view it whenever I want and share it with my friends. The other day, Guru showed me that my classmate Anna is interested in motion graphics too. Anna had a ton of motion graphic samples that I hadn't seen. We chatted and she recommended some of her favorite pieces for me to add to my collection. School is almost over, and it's time to find a summer program so I can get a head start on what I want to study in college. My mom's an accountant, though, not an artist. She's worried about me jumping into a field she's never heard of, but she likes that I'm so motivated. Guru helps me share what I've learned with my mom. Using the map view, mom and I can look at summer programs I've tagged. Guru also recommends other schools that I might not have found or known about. Because of Guru, I'm no longer scared of questions about the future. I'm connected to creative professionals in fields I was unaware of. Thanks to Guru, I'm on the path to figuring out what I truly want to pursue in college. So Christina's journey is typical for a teenager using Guru. She starts off with unfocused interest in film, and through immersing herself with peers and professionals, she becomes more focused and engaged. But now how exactly does Guru work? To start, professionals, companies, or schools post content through several different channels, such as the Guru browser sidebar or existing bookmarking platforms and social networks. That content is then automatically published to the Guru profile pages. Teenagers are then notified of these updates through their personal browser sidebar while they're doing what they do every day, just surfing the web. Now let's take a look at some of those key interactions in more detail. So this is what a teenager sees when they visit a professional's profile page. A professional can participate as their schedule permits, so at the least, they'll have a static section of basic profile information and a recommendations list. However, they are encouraged to post their work, stories about day in the life and current activities on a more regular basis. And Guru makes this easy and convenient by aggregating Twitter, Facebook, and Flickr feeds directly onto their profile page. Then a teenager visiting this page can save any media or link by dragging and dropping it to the collections icon at the top of the page. They can then interact with this content in a variety of ways on their personal page, which we'll share with you in a moment. But finally here, teens can interact directly with professionals by asking questions or engaging in dialogue on the message board. 
So next is an example of a teenager's personal profile page. The collections palette is a space where they interact with that content in several different views. So here uh, is the social view, and it's a place where teenagers can chat with friends or exchange content, and also see overlapping interests with other peers and professionals. The map view is where uh, plots location-based content, such as universities and after-school programs. Here, Guru provides tailored recommendations to teens and parents when it's time to look at colleges or to connect with professionals at a local level. Guru truly goes beyond existing social networks by providing contextual academic and career recommendations. Um, as you can see right down here, um, no other service really encompasses all that Guru has to offer. Um, a lot of Guru's features have had proven success in a lot of other fields. For example, LinkedIn uses networking and professionals, um, and Delicious uses the opportunity to bookmark and share content. But none of these are focused on teens. Um, in addition, none of these has a dy dynamic browser sidebar that helps continuously populate fresh and relevant content. Guru is based on a simple advertising model that is easy to implement with low overhead. Um, some basic advertisers include um, companies, universities, and art institutions. Um, alternatively, Guru could serve as a uh, marketing engine for any variety of educational groups or online career organizations. Um, best of all, though, here is really how Guru can be expanded uh, beyond the arts to identify profiles, professionals, and careers in fields like engineering, science, um, medical, environmental, etc. cetera. Uh, but the bottom line is we really need to do more to get teens from there to here. Uh, the young teen with a watercolor set needs to realize that the opportunity to become an illustrator at Disney is really just a series of informed and smart decisions away. However, it takes exposure to working professionals uh, as well as the schools and programs that will help nurture them at a young stage, get them through high school to college, and eventually out into the working world. Thank you. Nice work, CMU. Once again, you have you know, six years of uh, videos you get to watch of how uh, others have done this. So, um, But this was... Uh, on par with what I've seen from CMU in the past, very nice. Uh, I like that um, how you guys took the research that, that identified these gaps, and there seem to be different gaps depending on the segment, uh, where there's just how do you connect people to creative industries or to people who have exposure to the creative industries. Um, but then, uh, which seemed to be the focus of where you're going until the very end, and I'm just curious why you felt the urge to to dive into the advertising model and how it could grow to be something bigger than just that and it could work for other industries and not just stay focused on the creative community? I think the focus is still very much on the creative community, uh, but the idea is, I mean, there are teens and jobs in jeopardy all over the place and right now we focus on teens because all of us have very different backgrounds as artists. Um, but truthfully, I mean, you know, this shouldn't just be limited to the arts. I mean, at some point there are going to be kids who say, you know, I'm interested in airplanes, but I don't want to be a pilot. So there's a whole host of fields from aeronautical engineering, you know, composite d design, that this would be a great tool to help expose them to. But don't you think our society already has plenty of ways for kids that are interested in that to get connected? I'm not sure that they do. I think that if this would work within the arts, there's an opportunity for it to work within other fields as well. Does anybody else of, of the five of you feel compelled to have this focus more just on the creative industry? I think our intention was, um, I mean, we did want to specifically focus on the creative industry. However, our intention with presenting uh, that part to you all was to highlight its scalability. Um, and to be honest, I don't really know whether uh, teens are being exposed to the fields that Eric had talked about. Mm -hmm. However, I'm, sh I'm sure there are some fields outside of the arts that could use the same model to, um, to you know, engage teens with. So I think that was our intention with that. Mm -hmm. And the last thing was, um, did, did you guys build uh, an interactive working prototype at all? Um, no, we mm -hmm. didn't. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not as of yet. Not as of yet, yes. <laughs> all right, thanks. 
Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is really applaud the research you guys did. I thought you did a really great job of uncovering some stated and latent needs in the, the user audience that you were looking at. And you did a really fabulous job, but you didn't spend enough time on it with the synthesis. I think you really showed a nice transition of how teens kind of find their way. Um, and it's a really interesting journey. And I think what's really also interesting is you've got a new take on a social network. You're connecting people unlikely to otherwise be connected. And I think that creates some challenges and some opportunities that you don't see in the things like Facebook. So I would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit more exploration of that piece of it. Um, and I guess the, um, the other thing I'd really like to see is uh, you, you went to the advertising model, but I think you've got a lot of creative opportunity here with this really great idea to explore things like philanthropy. It's certainly a passion point, I'm sure, of the people that invest their time in something like this social network, the, the gurus themselves. Um, and then also looking at uh, an economic engine tied to some of the, uh, the outfits that would benefit from students having gone through this. So if you think about the Disneys and a lot of the other companies that have some money to be able to um, you know, make them pay for being able to get access to some of these students and some of the, the new talent coming through. So um, I love the creative energy that you guys uh, approach this with and I think it's a really great idea to pursue for real. Um, I'd love to see you just push the edges a little bit more in some of the other traditions aspects of social networking. Sure, thank you. I wanted to also uh, commend Carnegie Mellon, um, all the projects that all your teammates didn't, didn't get here to present today look really intriguing and uh, uh, I, I loved yours. Uh, I love the, the subject matters obviously dear to everybody here <laughs> at some level and that's you know compelling and I thought Eric you did a great job just telling the story and that little statistic that you know that how many arts educators are going to be out of work in 2012. And it's just, I mean, you emotionally had me there. I'm like, all right, well, whatever they're going to do, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Um, um, Cause it's going to solve this great problem. So I was sort of excited about that. And um, so great summary of the problem and that set you up for a good presentation. And um, I really liked the scenario. The scenario was, you know, well told, good story. Um, I, I think when I get down to the, to the, to sort of the details of the design, I'm, I'm, I'll be careful what I say here, but I, I wonder if the professionals are sufficiently motivated here, um, and that's that's going to be the critical aspect um, of, of of the relationship in terms of obviously there's a great benefit to the students, and and um, you know there's a lot of um, altruism out there, and a lot of people who are willing to give to the community, but is there enough and in enough of the um, domains to have a rich sort of set of folks that are there to, to sort of give, give, give the benefit of their time. And I think this speaks to a lot of the service design kind of challenges right now is how do you sufficiently motivate uh, the participation um, and what are the mechanisms by which the professionals are getting rewarded for their, um, for their contribution. Um, and uh, I wondered if actually you'd actually done any work on understanding what might motivate them beyond what you showed in that, in that, in that slide. Yes, um, when we spoke to professionals, um, a lot of them uh, seemed to uh, already have mentor relationships with um, a slightly older audience because they didn't know how to specifically get access to teenagers. Um, but there was a huge sense of altruism, like you had mentioned. Um, but apart from that, we, when we spoke to them, uh, they found that this would be a perfect way for them to display their own work. Um, or even further tie it up with the company that they're associated with. So we, ha we didn't focus on it in our presentation, but the profile pages do have the ability to be associated specifically with a company rather than a professional. So, um, yeah. I think also um, um, one of the things some of the artists that we talked to said that it would be a new avenue for business. Um, so, for example, if I'm a musician, you know, so it's a trusted way for kids to find different, you know, local professionals. Um, that they can go through the work and see if the parents evolve then so it's a little bit more of a trust relationship then so um, a lot of them saw it as an opportunity to build new business um, and as you said display some of their work as well yeah I think that Coraflot like model where yeah, you know exactly. the, the top portfolios are really getting some premium attention is, is it something to leverage uh, in, the, in the design I did like the um, visualizations uh, attempt to sort of mm -hmm. Do some sort of clustering around the visualization of the of the subject matter kind of affinity. That was really exciting. And then that that one illustration of the um, of the sort of 
how the you know spotty became the line, um, kind of that that sort of flow. I thought it was just a really nice little touch in the presentation, uh, just sort of talking about the the journey of the experience. So congratulations, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.